the cross River state governorship elections. Well, Ms. Florence Itagawa joins us now. She's the political leader of the Kansi people in cross River state. Thank you for coming on this morning. Thank you, um, Senator Florence Itagiwa. My pardon me. <laughs> Senators don't joke with the title. <laughs> <laughs> but then, I mean, you, you have spoken previously about this election. Yes, I have. Uh, in cross uh -huh. River state. So that people who know your stand already. Yes. But of course, for those who don't, what's your grounds about the elections? Um, well, my, my grounds is not really about the elections, you know. Um, election was conducted in Cross River State. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, PDP worked very, very hard, you know, and as usual, campaigned and, um, <clears throat> you know, won the election. <clears throat> so uh, the victory of PDP is not, is not in any way questionable. But my issue today is, mm, uh, you know, uh, much more... Um, it, worse than winning, you understand. The if if a, if a politician goes round with a candidate, if a community that belongs to that political party, let's use um, PDP as a case in hand now. You understand, PDP is, is a ruling party, and the state is predominantly <coughs> PDP, and every politician likes to participate. In the electoral or democratic process, so if a for a politician, I Florence Itagiwa, in this last election, I put in a lot, my energy, my time, resources, campaign material, because there's no way you can win an election without informing the people through any means whatsoever. And I put in a lot, and I made sure that my people also took part in the whole, you know, ritual of campaigns and all that, the Bakasi people. Now, the worst thing you can do to, for, to a politician is to make it impossible for that politician to vote. I'm almost tempted. I'm on national TV. But, you know, I don't know if what I would have likened it to would be expected of me or would be nice enough, but... I don't know how a man would feel if you wake up and somebody comes to do a Bobby's divorce. I'm sure you know what that means. That is what I want to liken it to. That the worst thing you can do to a politician is for the politician not to vote. It takes away your confidence. It diminishes you. Because for now, I did not vote for Imoke. I would not be able to complain if Imoke does not develop my area. It will be difficult for me to go and ask Imoke for anything. Despite the fact that Imoke knows that I even addressed the national rally I worked, but the one thing that I was obliged to do finally was to vote for Imoke, which was impossible because I'm from Bakasi. So why was this the situation? I mean, we understand <coughs> that a court order you know, stopped INEC from conducting elections there. Who initiated uh, that uh, particular proceeding that it was? Uh, that's a good question because um, I am a Nigerian, I'm a politician, but you know, strange things never stops happening in Nigeria. The older you get in this Nigerian nation, the more, you know, you see very, very strange things. Elections have been held in Bagasi local government, the day spring area. From, first of all, the registration, you know, which I'm, I'm sure that I, I watch with interest when people came here <coughs> with their books. I know I'm not a lawyer, I'm a lawmaker. You understand, a medical, a nurse by profession, and a lawmaker. So I cannot delve into law, but I know about lawmaking <coughs> because I've been in the, in the you know, National Assembly of my political life. So I watched with keen interest, and I was thoroughly entertained when people were coming here with their books and all that to debate, without touching on the reality on ground. But I would get to that if I have the time. The issue is that people were asked to go and register. And at the time, because initially we had been relocated to Ika, and we reluctantly accepted that because it was some kind of soft landing. There was so much confusion. Everything was hardly done. The ICJ judgment came. The next thing, seeding and all that. Now, you know, short of <clears throat> what to do at the time, the Ikan, you know, alternative came as a means of soft landing. So we reluctantly accepted 
to go to can rather be thrown out of Nigeria. And I thought it tomorrow, I do not blame the Ikan people because they came with their three words. According to what the pronouncement by my former boss, President Obasanjo, after the seeding and in his relocation speech, in his speech, he said that the people of Bakasi will be relocated to a sparsely populated area of Cross River State with their political structure, their traditional structure, and the entire people of Bakasi. And that was, for me, good enough. You know, it was a good soft landing. And then the poor Ikan people were now brought in three words, three Ikan words, to join Bakasi. And the law number seven that everybody has been coming here to flag around, in my opinion, law number seven, if law on number seven came, when, you know, came as it was presented without the Nigerian factor, it's okay. Because law number seven says that the three Ikan words shall join Bakasi, you know, local governments and make up what is known as the local government. So I don't have any issue with law number seven, <laughs> apart from when they now went back to go and work out the schedule without anybody being there. But that is not even what I'm, I've come, you know, come here to discuss today. The fact of the matter is that Igini, God bless him, came and registered Bakasi people in this spring. You understand? At the time that the people were crying that you cannot take us away from our land and now go and describe us by names. For instance, now, Florence Itagiwa does not have a name of a place. I come from Antaima. So if you ask me, where do you come from? I say, I come from Ward 1. Okay, sorry to, to but in. Could you explain, is that the Spring 1 or the Spring 2? That those who talk about that, or is it the same thing? The Spring 1, the Spring 2, Kwa Island, are all the same thing. It's the area, you understand, that was left out. All right. Which Guinea has been singing like a song, explaining that, you know, he now, I mean, it just came. So everybody accepted that. Everybody was happy that, fine, you know, we're going to have our identity back. So he now asked everybody, at the time, because I was at the meeting, he asked everybody to go that, from what he has in INEC record, you understand? Mm -hmm. What is in INEC record is still the political structure of Bakasi with the ancestral names. Which means that somebody was careless. Which means that by the time you enacted your law number seven, you do not have a right, you understand, to uh, you know, put that law in place, you have to go to the National Assembly to ratify it. Now, what happens it is the same carelessness of this nation. It's the same laziness where people start something, they don't end it well. Because yeah. you understand, and then the poor man pays for it. When you came up with law number seven, you are supposed to take that law number seven to the National Assembly for final ratification. As the Cross River State House of Assembly? Yes. So in this case, since, since they didn't take it to the National Assembly for ratification, can the, could the people still vote at that? No, 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 you don't understand it. What Nigeria has now is what is in the instrument of this nation, the constitution. You understand? The Bakasi local government that Nigeria has now is the Bakasi local government that is in the constitution with its ten words. Do you understand? But for me, today, that is not even the issue because we have overflogged the issue. The issue now is that we registered in this spring. Okay. You understand? As bona fide Nigerians. And we're given, I have my uh, voter's card there. Our number is 04. Our Pabuyo is 03. Now, what happened is that when Igini now asked people to go and register and told the Ikami people the three words that your names are not in Bakasi. Your names have, they've not finished anything. Your name is still under probably your local government. So you don't have a choice than to go to probably your local government to go and register. And for a politician, for you to carry <laughs> the voter's card is important. So they all willingly went to probably you to register. Uh -huh. Now what we are going to see, like, it's like drama, it's like playing house. I've been calling it house. They went to Akpabuyo to go and register, the Ikan people, which is okay. Otherwise, they will lose their you know, right to vote and be voted for. So they went there to register. And now, we registered in this spring. And as far as I'm concerned, that matter was closed. And we went to this spring, and I've been trying to settle that, even though the government has been very, very slow in going to, you know, uh, develop that area. So for me, at some point, I said, well, maybe it's like punishment being in this spring. So I took it on myself and a few people. And we tried to, you know, create some infrastructure there so that the people can go and vote. And even people in this spring can vote. Because they keep saying that this spring is swamped. But the people are not farmers. 
The people cannot, Bakasi people cannot live in landlocked areas. The people are fishermen. Even their body chemistry is along the riverland that is conducive to their body chemistry. So they want to be in that area. So they are not complaining. What well, they say that the area is filled with militants. We don't know about militants. We know that there are some Ijo people. And Bakasi was not just Calabar people. Bakasi had the Ijoas, had the Lages. You understand how the Aquaibon people, like my word, the first boy that used to show me the creeks when I was trying to enter Bakasi after House of Rep was an Elaje boy. So when Abacha gave us the local government, which we applied for, I made an Elaje boy councillor. But eventually, they were not able to vote. Eventually, now, coming back to voting, yeah. come, but what I don't understand is that an injunction came on Friday, you understand, saying that they should observe the law number seven and the people should not vote in that ECAM because in that day spring area because law number seven does not include day spring. But listen to this ACN man just left here now. We have had three elections in Nigeria and this in my state and this is the first election. Election, presidential election, you understand? National Assembly election, state assembly election. Now, these three elections were conducted in this spring. The Ikan people went and voted in these three elections in Akpabuyo as per their voters' card registration. Uh -huh. You understand? Now, the interesting one, and I'm happy that ACN man just left here. I have the, the figures. The interesting one is that the state assembly, if you are objecting to election being held there, the last state assembly election, ACN... Labour Party scored 11 votes in this spring. Eh? ACN scored 614 votes in this spring. ANPP scored 6 votes in this spring. PDP scored 1,504 votes, which means that people subjected or submitted themselves to the electoral process in this spring. Three elections. Now, the strange thing is that on the eve of the gubernatorial election, and I thought it was, I'm not a lawyer, I don't know their terminologies, but I thought it was an injunction, but now I'm being told that it's a judgment. Came at, on a Friday at about 5.30 in the evening, that elections should not hold in this spring. When people, when we've been conducting elections, Did they give any reason why? That this spring is not part of law number seven, and yet four elections have been conducted in that place. And the people okay. there participated. And the people there participated. And the Ikan people went and voted. You see, what we've been... It, it, you know, this country that I'm talking with people's lives, and I think we read the end. All this, I do not want to come and talk to you people because I don't like to talk when I shouldn't talk. But I'm speaking now from in-depth knowledge and what is on ground. Okay. What is on ground is that for many years now, now 10 years on, we don't have a home yet after the seeding of Bakasi. Ten years on, we don't have a home. From the time that we're relocated, there's no single person living in Ikan. Bakasi person living in Ikan. Do you understand? During election, please, this is very important. During election, all these three elections I've told you, and during registration, some of our people, out of desperation, had to quietly stroll back to Cameroon to go and end their income. Okay, but and the... during elections, I sent both to even Cameroon to bring out Bakasi people, including the largest, to right. come and vote. We, we, we read the, the response of INEC in this matter. Yes. And they say, as a creation of law, which yes. INEC is, yes. since they were served with that court judgment, <coughs> that, that hands were tied. They had to obey the court order. So in that case, what else could they have done? No, I'm not, I'm not uh, uh, blaming INEC. You understand? I just read INEC interview in, uh, in Punch. You understand? INEC explained everything that I'm trying to tell you now. Okay. INEC justified why elections should have been held in, in this spring. Do you understand? But if INEC is obliged to abide by the court's order, you understand, then I cannot question INEC. As, as a responsible Nigerian, I would hate to even question the integrity of the judiciary of this country. But in this case, it is questionable. Mm. You understand? Because I would expect a judge to ask, why did you subject yourself to the other three elections? Uh, why have you suddenly realized that this place is not recognized by the so-called local law number seven? Do you understand? I'm just speaking, you know, because I'm a neutral person. But they use people for political reasons. They use people for all kinds of reasons. I don't need anything from anybody. My commitment is for my people. 
Because my father was a traditional ruler in Bakasi and I've been committed from when I was a kid to fight this struggle for these people to be left alone and properly relocated. So, why is, speak, no, is it is the, the report that was just about 6,000 people that are disenfranchised. Is it the 6,000 or an entire local government? An entire local government because on that day, you understand, an entire local government because if you're going to conduct the election in a river Rhine area, it takes a lot of preparation. You understand, we are hired boats, we are going to cross the river. About three hours journey. We are hired boats. <coughs> we are prepared. I'm a mother. We are prepared food that they will take overnight, even including for the youth couples who are going to, you know, serve there. We look after them because I'm neutral. We are prepared everything, and people have moved now to the beach to go before somebody now came and said, Oh, last night an injunction came out. You understand? We have put in so much resources. People have kitted themselves, ready to travel to that place because they want to vote for their area, you know, for, for the election in their area, so that that area can be developed. But why is day, <coughs> uh, day spring uh, one or two? Is, is that a part of Nigeria? It or is that, a part of Nigeria. It's geographically located across the vast states, and it's a part of Nigeria. Do you understand? It's a part of, it's geographically located. But and nobody lives there. People live there. I can take you to this place if you want. People live there. You know, people live there. You know, and even this injunction, and I'm going to say it openly because I'm prepared to be, you know, anybody who likes and do anything to me or take me to court. But do you know what I discovered before leaving Calabar? What? That the four people that were said to be the claimants, claimants, the four people, hmm. out of the four people, two of the chiefs are actually from Day Spring and reside in Day Spring. And they came out in shock. As I speak now, they're in Calabar. They came out in tears and in shock. How can we not want election to hold in our area when we have had three elections and we want people to come in and develop the area? There are two children that had no idea that their names were on the list. It shows how we are deteriorating in this country. Was it, could you put a figure? Because, I mean, some reports said it was about 6,000 people. I think INEC also said it yesterday. Yeah, that's about, 6, about, about, yeah, about, 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 about 6,000 people. Well, but I know, I now know. You see, you see in the last... Maybe four or five years of my life, I don't do anything else than politics. You understand? I sleep and wake up, politics and bakasi. And in my mind, I try to unravel it. And I'm sure that the SMI, I'm happy that the SMI I just left here. As I said, it was true that the turnout was quite low. And I heard you say that in, in, um, in municipal areas, you understand, people, the elites would hardly leave their homes to vote. But I think that the opposition, realizing that the only place that Imoke is likely to get block votes, because in Bakasi we do block votes, everybody votes the same way. Who is going to help us? And we know that Imoke, if given time, would insist on the federal government to come and help Bakasi because, you know, it's, it's something that he inherited, which is unfortunate. Okay. So we know that if given time, Imoke would come and help us develop the area. So Bakasi was going to vote Imoke and block. And I now believe that it is an opposition, one of the opposition parties, they know themselves, that went to get that kangaroo injunction. Knowing that at least Imoke would have gotten not less than four, five thousand votes from that local government. Okay, so but... last minute, it's, it is a judicial ambush. Okay, but could you... Uh, and uh, created by politicians. Help us correct this if it's wrong, because there are reports that... Um... The chairman of Bakasi, Honorable Ekbo Ekbo Basi, uh, and his people rooted for the new Bakasi at Ikan Axis. Is that correct? I don't know about rooting for Bakasi, but I know that I was, in, you know, when I came out of, when the House of Representatives 91 was dissolved, and I came out and in my anger, I started crying out for Bakasi people. And I know that I did not contest the election to go to the Constitutional Conference. I was invited to go to the Constitutional Conference to use that opportunity to raise the issue of Bakasi. And along with Dr. Emmanuel San and uh, Chief Tony Ani, we applied for Bakasi local government. And it was accepted and created by Abacha. So I don't know about anybody rooting for anything. All I know is that we had a circumstance that we needed some kind of soft landing, so we teamed up with these people. You understand? And all we know is that from now on, we are insisting that we have to be resettled with our, you know, ten assets. We have already been resettled, and we are going to stay in in this spring because they have been paid. Yeah, because they have been paid compensation. You can. 
So we are staying in this thing, but I need because we are still resolute. But you have to challenge now, the court judgment. Then. We are going to challenge the court judgment. We have put everything in process. Enough is enough. You cannot use people's lives to do politics. What happened there was to reduce Imoke's food by ensuring that Bakasi food is not. So INEC has also said that they are going to appeal that particular of course, uh, judgment. Of course. The question will be if finally the court rule in your favor, would you like INEC to go back and conduct elections there? Would that matter to you? It would matter to me because it would prove a point. Just like, we, you know, today when I talk about Jonathan's, uh, Jonathan, you understand, President? Jonathan, if I'm to protest, I'll protest as of right because I work for him and I voted for him. Do you understand? So I will speak as of my right. If people complain, if I want to complain, I can complain about Jonathan with confidence that I voted for him. You understand? I can complain about the senator and the House of Representative member because we voted for him. But for now, we cannot complain because we were not allowed to vote for him, okay? And we wanted to vote for him, okay? We were not allowed to vote for him. But that's, that's not even the issue. That voting is not the issue. The issue is that it has gone even beyond the state and Nigeria because we are taking our matter to the world now. Because it's not Cross River State that seeded us. It's not Nigeria that seeded us. It's a combination of factors and people that, countries that went and seeded us. I was at the Green Tree signing arrangement and I know that U.S. was there. Netherlands was there, France was there, Denmark was there, and all that. So I'm going now to petition these people that have reneged on their promise to settle us properly. But what I'm going now to petition the UN that reneged on their you know, promise to, because, to, to settle us properly because we are not violent people. Otherwise, we would have gone into the bush to start fighting. But the leadership of the party shares the same thoughts. I'm sorry? The leadership of the party in the states. Did they share the same? The what? The leadership of PDP in Cross River States. Are they on the same page with you on this? I am, I'm a leader. I'm on my page with my Bakasi people. I'm not playing politics with the lives of people. You understand? All I'm saying is that had we been allowed to vote, we would have, you know, brought a block vote for Imoki. But it's not that we want, we don't, my interest is not what the party thinks. Because it's not about political party. So there are other political you... parties in this thing. This is about the life of individuals that people are toying with. So would you want the elections to be redone because people were disenfranchised? Of course, there's something as bad as being disenfranchised as a Nigerian. So would you want the elections to be Of course, elections yes, to be yes, redone? elections should be done. But more so, because this thing that happened now is also a good thing. Because we are going to be more proactive in our demand as Nigerians to be resettled as sons and daughters of this nation. In our demand for this country to stop trampling on, on, on those Bakasi people. We are going to fight for it. It's a good thing because God does things in very, very many mysterious ways. And it's a, a reason now for us to get and say, okay, right, we have been very quiet and gentle, nothing has happened. But now we are ready to face the matter and ensure that we are not, or some are going to say that we are not Nigerians, then take us out of the country. But so long as we are in this country as Nigerians, we are, you are obliged to settle us properly. You are obliged to stop trampling on us. You would like to provide all the infrastructure in that destiny area for us to settle down. And you must stop playing politics with people's lives.